Canadians can expect to head to the polls on September 20th. The Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, will ask the Governor-General to dissolve Parliament on Sunday, setting the stage for a 36-day campaign. That's according to sources. Opposition leaders are already criticizing Trudeau for triggering an election during a pandemic just as the fourth wave takes root. How concerned are Canadians about COVID-19 as we enter a federal election? Shachi Curl is president of the Angus Reid Institute. Shachi is in Vancouver. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Uh, we're just days away from a federal election campaign. How are Canadians feeling about COVID-19 at this point? Uh, they are back into a place where concern is ticking back up, Katie. So we saw concern really slide, particularly when we asked Canadians, how worried are, are you yourself about personally contracting COVID-19? That really, really started to dissipate as vaccinations went into people's arms. But of course, the Delta variant, and now we're reading about breakthroughs. And in the last week, we've seen a five point increase in the number of Canadians who now say that they are worried about personally falling ill. Uh, that kind of increase over a matter of seven Seven days is notable and it certainly now it, it does at 52 percent put us back into a situation where a slight majority of Canadians are worried about it so it's on their minds they're watching it they're alive to it uh, what does your latest data reveal about who Canadians plan on voting for so new data out today available on angusreed.org if people want to get deeper into it uh, sh continues to show a five point uh, lead for the liberals over the conservatives. So right now we see them at 36 percent, the liberals, 31 percent for the conservatives, the NDP in third place, a fair bit back at 19 percent. Uh, Katie, one of the big stories here has really been the disintegration of green support. So months and months of, of uh, speculation, public infighting, conflict in a very public manner uh, between the leader and other members of the party has seen not only the party go from where it was in terms of popular vote in the last election, six, almost 7%, uh, it's right now standing in terms of decided and leaning voters at 3 percent and what's really key here is vote retention so the number of people who voted green two years ago uh, is dissipating and a lot of that vote it's not a huge amount but hey every point counts every vote counts a lot of that vote is now marching to the Trudeau Liberals if that's what stands out most to you there what else should Canadians be looking for as they watch the horse race aspect of this well, it's going to be, I think, quite interesting to see how the pandemic, how the surge, how the fourth wave, and gosh, don't we all wish it wasn't here, but it's here, uh, has an impact on the campaign. Now, in terms of voter turnout and vote intent, two different things, there is actually uh, a potential or some potential or opportunity to benefit the incumbent Liberals. And I'll explain why. So for the most part, overall, about half, more than half of Canadians do say that both the Prime Minister and government, uh, his government, have done a good job handling the pandemic. And when you look at who's concerned about the pandemic, there's definitely a right-left tilt. If you're to the right of centre, you're less concerned about the pandemic right now, and you're more inclined to vote Conservative. If you are on the left of center, you are already more likely to be concerned about the pandemic. But that doesn't mean that people are angry and say, well, why are we in an election? They're more like, well, we're thinking about who would be best to handle it. And that is something that tilts to an advantage for the Trudeau Liberals. So let's see how that plays out. The other issue, Katie, has to do with voter turnout. So we saw this in BC in the in the provincial election uh, last October, where a lot of voters just mailed in their ballots. They mailed it in. They were quite happy to do that. What that does in an already truncated campaign is it leaves less time and opportunity for newer leaders like Aaron O'Toole to introduce himself to the swing voters that he needs to woo. Uh, and it changes the dynamics around gaffes and the length of the campaign. If you have a really strong first part of it that could benefit you if you stumble in the beginning and people start to lock in that might not work out so well and then of course how many people will actually vote if they're seriously concerned about 
community spread of COVID-19, how many people will show up to a polling station and cast a ballot? So we might also be looking for what that means in terms of voter turnout and who that benefits. Lots of things to watch. And we'll be chatting lots, I'm sure. Thanks, Chachi. Thanks, Katie. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.